Thank you, Jesus. Let's gather around, amen, so we can pray. Let's, let's link hands together. Let's come in agreement so we can pray, amen. On the behalf of Pastor Charlie and Pastor Linda, we just want to welcome you all out. If you're here for the first time and you haven't been here before, if you're the first time visit, we just want to welcome you here to Destiny Community Church. Can somebody say, thank you, Jesus? Amen. Our God is good. Let's pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, God, we thank you for what you're going to do tonight, God. God, I pray, let your peace come. Let your holy presence come and minister to us this evening, God. Father, I pray you know every need in the house today. You know exactly what they're going through. You know what exactly they need. And only you, God, can meet their need tonight, God. I pray let your presence come and just fall on us like rain tonight, God. I pray that you would open up our eyes, that we can see clearly, and, and, and that you would open up our ears, that we may hear what your spirit will tell us tonight. And God, when we leave this place, God, it won't just be another church service, but when we leave this place tonight, we have made up our mind to allow you, God, to, to, to come in and make changes in our life tonight. So when we leave this place, Father, we don't leave the same. In Jesus' name we pray. And the whole church say with me, amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Well, I have the opportunity of introducing our guest. Well, he's no longer a guest. He's not a guest. I say... I really didn't know Pastor Daniel that good until we started fellowshipping with him. So he was kind of new to me. So when he started coming to church, but there was something different about Pastor Daniel. He, I, I could tell that he loved God. And number two, he was willing to do anything. He would say, hey, whatever you need, I'm willing to help. And that's the type of attitude that God is looking for. Can somebody say Amen. He's not a guest in our house. He's a servant in our house now. Amen? Come on, somebody. And will you help me welcome Pastor Danny Gonzalez? Come on, somebody. Stand to your feet. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Oh, praise God. Am I on? Am I on? Yeah, I am. I am. On. Look at all eyes on me. Lord, have mercy. You know, uh, it is an honor and it's a privilege to stand here before you guys. Uh, the devil is a liar. He said that I will never, I will never step my, a foot on the pulpit ever again. Uh, but before, before we get started, I just want to introduce myself. My name is Daniel Gonzalez. Uh, all you guys know me as Brother Daniel. Some of you guys don't know me, but I am Brother Daniel. You guys don't need to, there's no, I, I'm not here for a title. And I talked to Pastor and I told him I'm not here for a title. I am just here to serve. The title comes when they, if they want to call me pastor, that's fine. But to you guys, you guys are my family, you guys are my brothers. And before we go any further, let me tell you a little bit about me growing up. Because I've known that as I go along and I talk to people in this house, either they grew up where I grew up, or they know people that I grew up with. So I don't want people to go around and talking about me because i rather tell you about what God has done in my life. Amen. God is, is so awesome. I had a praying mother. She had us praying in our knees. And, and, and I didn't like it. I think nobody liked it. But we prayed. We prayed with her. You know, all my brothers and sisters, they're, they're all awesome. I got my brother right here and his, his beautiful girlfriend right here. Uh, which he, he was the only one that came, came, came tonight. But, but the thing is that when God made us, he made us with free will. So he didn't force me to love him and follow him, but he gave me a choice what road to take. So I chose to take the wrong way. So I started partying with the guys at the age 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, by, seven, by 15 I was already doing dope. And, and, 
At 18, I was already addicted to cocaine. At 19, I ended up in prison. After prison, I came out, and God gave me an opportunity because God is the God of another chance and another chance and another chance. Can I get an amen? After I did great, but you know what? We forget where the blessings come from. The blessings come from above, over the hills, and our help comes from the Lord. Amen? So I forgot where, 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 where my help came from, and I ended up going back to the addiction again. But now it was a little bit harder, and now I'm drinking more, more beer, now I'm drinking vodka, now I'm drinking whiskey, now I'm drinking whatever it, it was to get high, now I'm starting doing meth, I started doing coke, I was smoking this, I was smoking that, but prayer changes everything. And I'm going to tell you something, because I am a witness of this, that my mother prayed for me. My mother went to go be with the Lord, and not after my mother went home to be with the Lord, that God answered her prayer. Because I'm standing right here, not drinking, not smoking, not doing drugs, but you know what? God's ear is not too, he's not deaf, and his hand is not too short when he can reach you and get you out of the gutter, amen? Praise God. You, you know, and, and, and I'm going to say, I stopped drinking for 15 no, no, about 13, 14 years, and, and uh, I've been, I got saved in 1994, so I'm not, I'm not, I'm not new, uh, uh, I just started coming to this church because this is where God brought me, okay? Uh, uh, not till 2006, 2007 that I jumped all in and said, Lord, here I am, do as you please. I'm here to serve. Along the, along the way, I, I was in church, I was preaching, I was ministering, I, I, couples ministry, I, whatever I was where I needed to be, I was serving God. But life happens, even in church. You think that church is the best place to come and say, you know what, this is where I feel comfortable. This is where my family is, and, 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 and this is my safe harbor. Amen? This is my safe harbor. But even in the best churches, do people hurt people? So, I got disappointed. You know, big baby. And so, we stopped going to church. But because I thought that knowing God and feeding myself with the Word of God was enough. But, knowing the Word of God well, let me tell you something. The devil knows the word of God. The devil knows the word of God. So, I struggled. And, and you know, it, the, the true proverb says that no matter how many times you wash a pig, the pig will always go back to the pig pen. And the dog will always go back to the vomit. So, I could say I've been sober for, I had a drink a few, a few months ago. I didn't get drunk. I had drinks. Bible says confess your sins to one another. And that is exactly what I'm doing now. Amen. But before we get started, can we all please stand? I know pastor, pastor is sick right now, but I want to pray for him. If you all can stand and just stretch out your hands. Amen. Precious friend and father, we love you, praise and We just thank you, heavenly father, for this opportunity to come here together and gather with the saints, heavenly father. I ask you right now in the name of Jesus, Heavenly Father, that you touch Pastor Charlie right now, Heavenly Father. You said that by your stripes that we are healed, Lord. And your word says that if we pray, believe, and receive those things that we ask for, that those things we should obtain, Lord. So we're not asking for material things, Lord, but we do ask you, Heavenly Father, that you just reach down and you touch Pastor Charlie right now, Lord. That you give him comfort, Heavenly Father, that you heal the body right now, Lord, in Jesus' name. We are believing and we are receiving his healing right now in the name of Jesus. Can somebody say amen? amen. Oh, praise the Lord. I was telling Pastor Mario and Pastor, uh, uh, what's your name again? Just kidding. <laughs> Pastor Jerry, that, that it's not fair. Pastor Mario preached an awesome sermon. Where's he at? Where's he at? There he is. I'm blind. Oh, th there he is. And then Pastor Jerry, so, so now he's like, mm. 
Oh, I'm sweating up here. Just kidding. Just kidding. So I want to take you to, to the Word of God because this sermon is for, it, it, it was meant for me. It was meant for me, but it's just an encouragement for the rest of you guys because you know what? We all go through things in life. And we come to church to hear the word of God and be refreshed, amen? We come here and get a, a fresh refill of the Holy Spirit every Sunday, every Wednesday, every Friday. Every, anytime we come and gather with, 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 with our family here in church. But uh, I just want to draw your attention uh, today to uh, the book of Timothy, 2 Timothy, 4th chapter. In the 6th verse, it says, for I am... Now ready to be offered. And the time of my departure is at hand. For I am now ready to be offered. And the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. And today my message is, it's titled, Keep the Faith. Fight the good fight. Amen. He says, for I am ready. Being poured out as a drink offering in the time of my departure is at hand. In our time of our departure, I believe it's at hand. This time in this world right now, we're going through things. Brothers and sisters, we're living in a troubled world in a time of sorrow. Scriptures are coming to pass, and yet the world is simply ignoring all the signs. And what troubles me is that a lot of people attend church week after week, day after day. They hear the word of God, walk out and remain the same. I just don't understand why the word of God. See, and my, my, my thing is that when I, when I try to minister to people, they say, I know the word of God. Well, if you apply the word of God into your life, then you wouldn't be going through the things that you're going through. Amen. Because everybody knows the word of God. But it's something to know the word of God and do what God is telling us to do. Amen? We hear the word of God and, and, and people, we all leave the same. And I know that God did not get us out of the world to come and, and, and for us to sit in the pew to entertain the same spirit we used to entertain. I'll say that again. God did not get us out of the world to bring us into his house, to keep on entertaining the same spirit that we used to entertain. I don't know what spirit you were entertaining, but I know the spirits that I was entertaining. Amen? And until we come to God with a made-up mind, until we come to God with a made-up mind, then, then that's the day that we're going to be able to live a godly life. Amen? We cannot continue to entertain that Spirit that we used to entertain before we were saved. You cannot entertain the old with the new. For the old does not agree with the new. Can I get amen to that? Ephesians 4, 22 through 25 says, Ye put up concerning the former conversation the old man, which is corrupt, according to the disciple loves, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that ye put on a new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness, so we must come to God with the made-up mind. Because if we don't come to God with the made-up mind, we're going to keep on coming to church and leaving the same way we came in. We need to come in with the made-up mind. James tells us like this, but, uh, and, and James 1, 22 to 25 says, but be doers of the word, and not only hearers, hearers only, deceiving yourselves, for if anyone's a hearer of the word and not a doer, he's like a man observing his natural face in the mirror, for he observes himself and goes away and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks at the perfect law of liberty and continues in it, and is not forgetful here, but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. So God doesn't want us to be just hearers of the word. See, we, we, we can hear or, or listen, but we don't hear. 
And today I'm asking that you hear the voice behind the voice. Hear the voice behind the voice. God is telling us to be doers of the word and not just hearers of the word. Because you'll be like a man observing his natural face in the mirror. How many, how many of you guys get, get in the mirror and say, Ay, que bonito estoy. I, uh, I look good. I tell my wife all the time, you know what, babe? I know I'm good looking, but, man, I exaggerated today. But as soon as I take off, uh, I don't know what I look like anymore. Why? Because it's just in our nature. You know, we forget. But God is saying if you, if you continue to do his work, you will not forget who you are and what it is that you need to do. You know, a long time ago, a time ago, I preached a sermon about being, being connected. And we need to be connected. Uh, connected to what? Connected to God. See, most of us are plugged in. Just like a phone. Who, who, who has a phone? Can I borrow your phone? We're plugged in. Who has a charger? No, just kidding. We're plugged in, right? We're plugged in. But we are not connected to the electricity. We're plugged in, but we're not connected. I got two. They're plugged in. We're, well, we're going to... Okay. Okay. We plugged in. But there's... No life. There's no life in it. So we have to be not only plugged in, but be connected to God. We need to be connected to God because without His Holy Spirit, it's just like your phone. We'll be dead by morning. We have nothing left. No battery juice, no nothing. Jesus said it like this. I am the true vine. And my father is a gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. While every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes. So that it will be even more fruitful. Ah. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. He says, remain in me, and I also remain in you. He says, abide in me, and I'll abide in you. Isn't that, ama isn't that amazing? Mm. He says, abide in me, and I in you. And the devil is a liar. I'm missing a page, but it's okay. <laughs> he said... <laughs> He ain't going to stop this. Uh, he ain't going to stop. See, okay, so he says, I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while, while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken unto you. But then he goes to say, I am the vine. You are the branches. And without me. He doesn't say you could do a little bit of this. And you could do a little bit of that. He says you can't do nothing. He's saying I am the vine. I am the life source. I am the life source. You are the branches. You are that connector. But without me, without electricity, you are nothing. I am what gives you life. But the problem is with that is that we think we, we some, some, sometimes, not, not here, not here, trust me, not here, not here. I, I promise you, I ain't talking about nobody, I'm talking about me. That we think that I thought that, that I was good enough that, that I already knew God. But you know what, I came to this church thinking that, hmm, I know something. Let me tell you something, I know nothing. I have so much to grow. I am I'm so much anointing men. I am so much anointing, anointed women. My pastor, he's an anointed man. He's a man of integrity. And I'm, I know he's watching. I, I'm not trying to get no cookie points or anything like that. But he is. Uh, we went looking for at churches and churches. And, and, uh, 
the word was the word, and it was awesome. The thing is that they didn't receive us the way Destiny Community Church has received my family. And so therefore, I am home. We are home. We are home. So let's stay connected to the word of God. Amen? It says, I am the vine. You are the branches. Without me, you can't do nothing. Uh, many people out there, you know, they think they, think they can fix everybody's life. You know exactly what they want. You know exactly what they need. You know exactly what they ought to do. <laughs> oh, Lord, have mercy. But I come to find out. So we got to be very careful who we take advice from. We got to be very careful who it is that we take advice from because, see, uh, we, we have to look into their lives. See, I married my wife, and, and I didn't introduce my wife and my family. Come here, babe. This is my beautiful wife that I'm so much in love with. I just don't love her because if I say I love her, love is just thrown out there. But this is my better half. She's the eyes behind my back, the leg I don't have. Oh, no, that's, that's something else. Uh, uh, but, but, but she is the love of my life, and I love her. My kids are here. I met her. She had two kids. No secret. I had two kids. They were kept a secret till like late. No, I'm just kidding. Two kids. We got married. We've been married 20 years now. Been married 20 years. We got three, three beautiful kids. Well, they're all beautiful. They're all, they're all good looking. And the ones that are not mine, they call me dad. And they'll say, that one looks like you. Oh, yeah, well, he's not, he's not even mine, but all right. But, but check this out. It's not, it's not about who planted the seed. It's about who fathers them, amen? It's about who fathers them. So we have to be careful. We're not perfect. We're not perfect at all. But the imperfection makes this work. I'm cool. You know? Uh, she's not. No, just kidding. She tells me to shut up. I shut up. When she walks away, I'll start talking again. I, I got this down pat. Hey, Amen. But, 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 but nevertheless, this, this is what makes us work. Makes it work. We have to, man, man we, we, we have to continue working in the relationship. We have to continue working in the relationship because, tell you what, you remember, well, Jerry, he's just buff all the, you know, he goes to the gym five hours a day. Not me. See, I used to be six feet tall and full of muscle. That, that was after the 12th beer. But come to find out, after I got sober, I'm five, six and full of the Holy Spirit. You guys, don't, don't, don't think nothing. Don't think nothing. Amen. But, but, but we don't take care of ourselves. Women, we come home and you're all chunk blue that with the hair like that and give me a kiss. Not, mm -hmm. not, not, not you, babe. I said, not, 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 not you guys either. You got security here? But anyways, in 1 Corinthians 10, 13, it says, it has, There has no temptation taking you, but such as is common to man. See, whatever, whatever it is that we're going through, you're not the only person that is going through, and I was not the only person that went through the things that I went through in life. I'm not the only person that went through trials and, and, and tribulations while, while I was in church, while I was in ministry. There's many of, many of you guys that, that have gone through all that. The Bible tells us that there is no temptation taken, you but such as is common to man, but God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but will with the temptation also way, make a way to escape, that you are able to bear it. See, God already knows what your, what, what your weakness is. He, he knows how strong you are, but he's not going to give you more than what you can handle. He will only give you exactly what it is that you can handle. Amen. Oh, 
The problem does not exist. A problem does not exist without a solution. So you don't have to worry. What you need to learn is to trust the Lord with all your mind, all your heart, and all your strength. That's what we need to do. Because in times of trouble, we forget who is in charge. But God says, stand still and know that I am God. Stand still and know that I am God. I got your back. And not like your friends that say, I got your back, but they say, I got oh, way, way, way back here. No, God is the only one walking in. Jesus is the only walking in when all your friends are walking out. Ah. Uh, you must love the Lord with all your mind and all your heart and strength. And once you learn to do that, whatever it is that you're going through, whatever you are facing will have no effect on you. Amen? Because you know that you know that you know that you know that God is able to deliver you from whatever it is that you're going through. But it takes faith. Faith can move mountains. But your doubt can create many in front of you. Faith can move mountains, but your, but your doubt, doubting in God, can create many in front of you. So you make your own obstacles. You need to understand that God said he will never leave you nor forsake you. His answer is yes and amen. God said, I will never let you be in a bad situation or, or, or in a, a devastation or a situation. In fact, I'm not going to let you go through any situation unless I also provide a life option for you. There has been no temptation taking you such as, as to a common man. What God is saying here is that you are not going through any situation that no other man has gone before. Now, I'm not saying we should rejoice that other people have gone through it. But you, have, you need to understand that you're not alone in it. The word temptation means here trials or tests. So the scripture says that they had no temptation taking you, but such a man is common. But God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted, tried or tested above what you are able. God says, before I let you go through anything, I have taken the time to survey your ability. I have surveyed what you can handle and what you can deal with. I will never give you more than what you can handle. Amen? God gives the hardest battles to his strongest soldiers. So if you're going through something that's really hard that you cannot bear, know that God has given it to you because he knows that you can handle it. God gives the strongest battles, hardest battles to his strongest soldiers. That's why songs of the old say, I'm a soldier. Hey, you guys said I was going to sing. I know you guys want me here after that every Sunday. <laughs> but God will not give you more than what you can handle, amen? Ah, Lord. In the army of the Lord, I'm a soul. I'm a fighting soldier. God says with every trouble, he would never let our troubles exist. Unless a solution is provided with it. A problem cannot occur unless a solution comes with it also. One cannot exist without the other. I'm getting ready to close. Is that, say 10. I know you guys are sleepy. Put you guys to sleep. But. Mm. Praise God. Give him praise. Look, if he's done something for you, as a matter of fact, just give him praise, not for what he's done, but just for who he is. Can somebody stand to your feet and just give God praise tonight? I mean, just shout and say, thank you, Lord. Listen, let me tell you, I've I, I, I been... I been I've been through 
through some tough situations in life. But, but, but not because, not, not because of anything or anybody. Everything that I've gone through, I've gone through it because of me. I cannot blame anybody. I cannot say because I never share this because I had brothers and sisters that took care of me, but my father passed away when I was eight or nine. People want to blame their situations, their attitudes, their addictions. They're all in all because they didn't have a dad. But that's just an excuse. Because we know that we have our Heavenly Father that never slumbers. He never sleeps. And when you're asleep, He's still at work in your life. So everything that I've gone through, it was my own choice. So when I take inventory of my life, and I say I was just a child walking in the street, I'm not, I wasn't that fortunate. I could have gone, but I didn't go to college. I have no degree. But I'm here to tell you, I made it. I made it. I'm not where I should be. But I thank God I'm not where I used to be. So when I think of the goodness of the Lord, and all that he's done for me. How he picked me up and turned me around and placed my feet on solid ground. My soul can't help but shout, Hallelujah! God says with every trouble, he will give you a solution. So that means if you're facing a death situation, whatever, whether you realize it or not, God is saying death cannot exist unless life exists also. Death cannot exist unless life is six is two. Even Jesus struggled a little bit with this finishing. He prayed so intensively in the garden of Gethsemane that sweat like blood, blood like sweat was pouring out from his skin. Same Father, nevertheless. Let this cup pass from him. He didn't receive an answer. But yet he said, All right, Father. Not my will, but your will be done. Your will be done. I know I went through a tough time trying to keep the faith. And the devil knows exactly where to get you. Because we think we are strong in the word and, and, and we cover our weaknesses in one area, just like a boxer, like a fighter. We cover ourselves right here because I know that this is where I hurt. But I don't care even if Jerry above and has a 12 pack, I mean a six pack and everything. But if I hit him on the rib cage over and over and over and over and over and over and over, he eventually gonna get. And that's the way the enemy plays with us. He messes with your mind because it is with our mind that we serve the Lord. This is a spiritual battle and the battlefield is in the mind. I don't know what you guys are going through. 
this evening. This message was exactly for me that we must continue to run this race. Paul said, I kept the faith. I fought a good fight. My fight is not over. We need to remember that this fight, that this life, that this race is not for the swift or the strong, but for that one that could endure. So if you're looking for endurance this, this evening, why don't you just come up? We want to pray with you, pastors. Something going on in your life that you guys need prayer. It's all right. God will wait. He's a patient God. Hey, listen, don't worry about what, what, what they're going to talk about you. They talk about you anyways. But I tell you what, give them something good to talk about. Listen, if not here, where? If not now, when? God is waiting. It takes courage to say I'm going through something God help me
inside. There is so much sickness and going on in, in our time right now. If you need healing, come forward so we can pray with you as well. And nevertheless, if you don't know our Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, God wants to give you the opportunity right now to receive Him. He said, I am the vine. You are the branches. Without me, you can't do nothing. Without me, you can't do anything. So if there's, if there's one, if there's one, even you like to receive the Lord as your Lord and Savior. Listen, don't be ashamed of, of, of what people are going to say. He said, the Lord said, if you're embarrassed in front of men, I'll be embarrassed of you in front of my Father. There's no membership. There's no dues. Salvation is free for you. Salvation is free for me. But somebody, somebody paid for it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Father, yes, Lord. Thank you, Father. Yes, Lord. you guys I'm going to be singing next Sunday. Go ahead, Pastor. Church, let's let Pastor Danny know how much we appreciate him. Amen for that word.